everyone. This is Lori Barnes. I'm back to share with you how to work with the Leo new moon and Mercury retrograde. Stay tuned. The Leo new moon is coming up this Sunday, August the 4th. Depending on where you are, it's at a different time. So remember that you want to do your new moon intentions during the new moon phase. You would do that after the new moon phase starts. Please check out what time it will happen in your time zone and do your new moon ritual after that time. Otherwise, you'll be in the previous cycle. This new moon in Leo is going to take place at 12 degrees of Leo. Leo is the sign of the sun. A new moon moon marks the beginning of a cycle. We have a new moon cycle that begins every month. The graphic here in the sky, we see the moon go from dark to full and then dark again. When we have the dark moon, the new moon, it is a new cycle. New moon cycles are new beginnings. They're about growth and refocus, refreshing things. But this particular new moon is taking place at the same time that Mercury retrograde begins. So we have this backward reflection type of thinking going on at the same time as a new moon. So it's two different messages. The Mercury retrograde is kind of like slow down, reflect backwards, and the new moon is about new beginnings. So what you're really doing is looking back at your progress and with this new moon type of quality, which is looking at how you can refresh and realign what you have done since the last Mercury retrograde. Here are the dates for the Mercury retrograde cycle. We're already in the pre-shadow phase. That started on July 17th. The pre-shadow phase is just the degrees that Mercury covers going forward that it's going to cover again when it goes retrograde. It's going to go retrograde on August the 5th, and it will go direct on August the 28th. When Mercury goes direct, then we enter the post-shadow phase, which is when Mercury covers those same degrees again for the third time going direct. The degrees that Mercury is going to travel over during its retrograde cycle is from four degrees of Virgo in six minutes back to 21 degrees of Leo in 25 minutes. So if you have planets or angles in that degree range, then that is going to be an important Mercury retrograde cycle to watch as it relates to that particular part of your chart. So that would be the astrology house and any planets or angles that Mercury contacts while it's retrograde. That will help draw your attention to the topics and themes that are likely to come up for you during this Mercury retrograde period. So remember, under Mercury retrograde, we reflect, review, and realign. It's going to be around topics that are associated with your Virgo and Leo astrology houses, and that's going to depend on your chart and your birth time to know what that is for you. So the Leo new moon means that the sun and the moon are both in the sign of Leo. And you can see here, this is the chart for the new moon without houses, because it's going to depend on your location as to the chart of the new moon. And then the planets, what house they fall in in your chart is again, dependent on your chart. So you definitely want to get a copy of your chart. A new moon always means that the sun and the moon are conjunct. That means they're in the same sign and the same degree. And as you see here on the chart, we have the sun and the moon both in the sign of Leo. And you'll also see Venus is in the sign of Leo at 29 degrees. It's going to change signs shortly after this new moon. Some of the key words that we have for Leo, magnetic, charismatic, confident, creative, dramatic, inspiring, bold, regal. So you can see these words here on the screen. The archetypes that go with the sun are the king and the father, a nobleman or a noble woman, the performer, an entertainer, and a leader. Leo is one of the fire signs, the fire element, and it operates on instinct. It's a very dynamic sign, a very creative sign, a very warm and optimistic sign. Leo is also of the fixed modality. It's the only fixed fire sign. And this brings a steady pace to how Leo does things and more adverse to change than the other fire signs can sometimes be stubborn, but has a lot of endurance. And some of the shadow types of characteristics that go with Leo are to be aggressive, dominating, arrogant, condescending, and inflexible. And of course, the symbol of Leo is the lion, the beautiful lion. And I think that one of the best mantras, okay, okay. <laughs> 
One of the best mantras to use with this Leo new moon and Mercury retrograde is to roar with confidence and use the golden rule, which is to speak or treat others the way you would like to be spoken to, the way you would like to be treated. Now let's look at the aspects that are happening with the sun and moon at the new moon. Because the sun and moon are together, they're going to make the same aspects to other planets. As you can see, they are both making contact to Jupiter and to Mars. So we have a sextile relationship here, which is 60 degrees apart. And as you can see, it's not exact, but pretty close. In fact, the sun and moon lay really at the midpoint of Jupiter and Mars, 12 degrees being in the middle of 15 and 9. So you have Jupiter at 15 and Mars at 9 degrees. So this is a pretty potent connection that these planets are making. Sextiles are generally considered harmonious or an easy flow of energy between the planets. With Moon sextile Jupiter, we have optimism and harmony. The moon is about feelings. And in this type of chart, we're really looking at a focus. It's a focus kind of energy with the moon there with the sun and Leo. Jupiter is about expansion. So there's a lot of expansive type of energy happening at the new moon, and it can be overwhelming. So even though we tend to look at sextiles as a flowing and positive type of relationship, it can also mean that there's a lot and it can be almost too much. And that really comes with the sun Sun sextile Jupiter, because Jupiter is about expanding and the sun is all about the light. The sun is our vitality. So we have this great amount of energy to tap into. Leo is a very creative sign. So there's a lot of creativity that you can tap into. Now, looking at the elements, we have fire mixing with air. Leo is fire and Jupiter and Mars are over there in Gemini, and that is an air sign. It's also one of Mercury's signs. So this is a really important thing to be aware of since Mercury rules Jupiter and Mars in this new moon configuration. And that's because Gemini is Mercury's sign and Mercury is going retrograde within 24 hours after this new moon. So there is a very big pull for us to look back, to reflect, to realign things from the past. So even though this is a new moon and we generally think about new moons as new beginnings, you really want your new things that you're working on to be around things from before. So not completely new things, but a new way of looking at something from the past. So pulling a project off the shelf or focusing on a project that's already started. If you've been working on something for the last few months, and now you want to go back and review everything you've done and kind of catch anything early before it becomes a big problem, you, you catch it when it's small, or you look at the foundation of what you've done. Done, and are there any cracks in the foundation? Is your foundation level? Is it solid? Do you want to keep building on that foundation or do you need to make it stronger? So bringing some new ideas, some fresh new ideas to something that's already been done is a great way to use this new moon. Fire and air are dynamic. Fire is fanned by air. It makes it bigger, more, more, more. At the same time, they're a fixed and mutable modality. So in Leo, we have fixed, which is more stubborn and, and it doesn't necessarily want to change. And then you have Gemini, which is mutable or changeable. So it's easily dispersed energy. It can kind of go all over the place quick, like fire that just jumps and moves all around. We see wildfires happening all over these days. And it's also a little bit like that. It's kind of like a wildfire kind of energy. But with the Leo being a fixed sign, it will try to hold on a bit to that and hopefully help you pace yourself so you're not kind of like scattered and running all over the place. Although I wouldn't doubt if you feel a bit of that, but having a fixed sign in this configuration does help focus some of that energy. But this is going to be wild, creative energy, like a wildfire. Just remember that you're probably going to get the best out of this energy by looking towards things that have already started. And relationships. I didn't mention that yet, but resolving any kind of relationship issue is a good time to do that with the Mercury retrograde. And this configuration is fire and air. So there may be a lot of words, there may be a lot of passion and energy that goes into those conversations, but you should be able to get everything out on the table that needs to get out. And that's usually a good thing.
Now, looking at some of the other planetary configurations going on at the Leo new moon, we have that Mars conjunct Jupiter. Now, we just talked about how those two planets were sextile the moon and the sun, but just looking at Mars and Jupiter together, this is an important meeting of these two planets, and this has been applying for a while. We saw this last month when we were looking at the second Capricorn full moon. We already had Mars making its way towards Jupiter when Mars just had entered Gemini a couple of weeks ago. Now it's getting closer to Jupiter and it's really gonna help Jupiter expand even more than it already expands. By its own nature, Jupiter is expansion oriented. Mars is action oriented. So now we're taking action oriented Mars and it's joining with Jupiter and it's just going to give a lot more energy. It's, it's like a boost. There's this boost that's being given to Jupiter to do even more. And in Gemini, a sign that's already an air sign and it definitely moves quick. It's one of Mercury's signs and Mercury is that quicksilver. It's a, a quick of the Jupiter energy. There can be more aggression that comes with this, and there can be a lot more frustration because when Mercury goes retrograde, there does tend to be more frustration, especially for people who don't know what Mercury retrograde is. They don't have the information to work with Mercury retrograde like you do. So you know that if you're focusing on things from the past and you're working on the review and the reflection and realign, you're really working in the flow or in tune with Mercury retrograde. But when you try to do business as normal, that's when you can get frustrated because the pace is different and you expect the pace to be the same and the pace isn't the same. Push, push, push. And that's when things tend to just exacerbate. The frustration exacerbates. With Mars and Jupiter being ruled by this Mercury retrograde, there is a greater possibility for frustration, mental frustration, but it will probably spill into some physical frustration. And especially if you're somewhere where it's really hot, like the heat just makes you even more frustrated. So do watch out for this increase in frustration and heated debates, conflicts. Jupiter is about ideology and vision. So as we see in the news, there's these differing viewpoints of what's best and who knows best and what fact is actually fact. There's just going to be a lot of that going on at the new moon. Now we look at Mercury square Mars and everything that I just said we have another configuration really supporting that. Mercury is the planet of communication. So when we talk about heated debates and ideology and words, ideology is more of a Jupiter thing. Mercury is how that is communicated and Mars is action. And now as these three planets are mixing it up together and Mercury rules Jupiter and Mars, it's just like these words, it's there's irritability and there's probably impulsivity in terms of what people might say. Uh, words can just maybe come out without thinking. So do be careful with what you have to say. You might have some of your own inner conflicts, especially if you have planets or points in Gemini, Leo, and Virgo. I definitely recommend limiting news and social media. I said that in the last video, and I think that just continues forward through this new moon lunation. And with Mercury retrograde, it's just, you know, like reflect research. If you're hearing differing viewpoints or if you're very stubborn and stuck on your own viewpoint, this can be a good time to just take a break and just do some of your own research. Like try to objectively approach the other side and try to understand where people are coming from. And that's not all that's happening. There's also a relationship to Saturn involved in this new moon configuration. We can see here that the same Jupiter Mars that we've been talking about, which you can see here in Gemini, it looks like the Roman numeral two up there where it says eight, that is making a connection with Saturn. So you can see in the image here, Saturn is in the fifth house, even though it's not really in the fifth house, but for the ease of understanding what I'm talking about, where it says number five, that's Saturn. There can be more frustration. Saturn is about limiting and consolidation, structure, discipline. And with Mars square Saturn, there can be a lot of frustration because Mars tends to want to do things. And Saturn's like, well, wait a minute. Like, what are the step-by-step step instructions. How do we do this? Let's figure this out first. And Mars is like, no, I just want to do it. So there's a bit of frustration whenever you have a Mars square Saturn type of relationship. And this is a growing relationship because Saturn is actually retrograde. So it's 
moving towards Jupiter and Mars is direct and it's moving towards Jupiter. Jupiter's kind of squeezed. It's right there in the middle of these two planets. It's It's got a square to Saturn and then it's got a conjunction to Mars. Conjunction is the same sign. So we call that besieged in astrology where Jupiter has one of these more difficult planets on either side. Not always difficult, but when it's sandwiched between Saturn, which is like stop, think, consolidate, have more discipline. And then Mars is like, go take action. And Jupiter's kind of like, wait, let me think about it all. And, and let me see the big vision. And how do I want to expand or grow or work with all of this? There's like this push pull kind of energy. I do like to think of Jupiter and Saturn as the gas pedal and the brake. Jupiter's like gas, let's go. And Saturn's brake, like wait, slow down. Let's stop and think about this. And then Mars is like, okay, we're just going to go and do it. So we have all three wrapped up. What does that mean? It means try to use patience as best as you can, knowing that becoming easily frustrated is likely to happen as we move through this lunation. Think about the long vision. So Saturn is always about the long term and Saturn is in Pisces, one of Jupiter's signs. So Saturn's already in a sign where the way it's expressing Saturn energy is to think about the bigger picture that will help you decide what to do. Because whenever you do in the short term things that help get you to your long-term vision, then you are going in the flow or in the direction of where you want to go. And that's a good thing, right? So Mars is saying to Jupiter, hey, you put on the gas pedal. Uh, and at the same time, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn are kind of in this more of a tension-oriented relationship where Mars is like, I want to go. And Saturn's like, no, I don't want to go. I want to take this slowly and go step by step. So you have both kind of like, go, stop, go, stop. That's what we're walking into. And then just keep in mind the Mercury retrograde backdrop that's happening behind all of these things that I've just talked about. And it goes retrograde on August the 5th, right after the new moon on August the 4th. So how are we going to work with all of these energies? Well, let's just go through them. So here are some ideas for how to embrace the Leo new moon energy. Leo is known for confidence. That's one of the signs that we look at. I mean, it's a sun quality and Leo is the sun sign. So there's more creativity and a chance to really tap into things that will increase your confidence. What I would recommend that you do is focus on confidence boosting activities. What things make you feel more confident? Do more of those. Because Leo is a fixed sign, there can be some resistance to change or adapt to some situation. I use the mantra, I am open to change. I know it sounds simple and silly. If you try to train your brain to use these words instead of any kind of negative sayings inside of your head, then you'll really be working on embracing more positive energy of inviting things into your life that you want. If you are frustrated, irritable, things are annoying you, and that's what's going on in your mind, you're kind of ruminating on that, then it's usually not helpful. So you want to use a more positive mantra. If you already know what you want, then use that as your mantra. But if you're not sure, and if you notice that there is some resistance going on, then use this one. I am open to change. Sometimes we need a simple mantra just to open the door to whatever may come next. We have that air energy, that Gemini energy with Jupiter and Mars. So there can be more curiosity and more wanting to change. Even with that Leo fixed energy, the Gemini energy does like change. So be curious, be very, very curious. It's a good Gemini word and also be responsible. And I say that because there's so much energy, like really like that dynamic energy, fire and air, whenever you imagine those elements together, like what they do, it's could be easy also to lose your temper or to yell at somebody or be like a whirlwind of energy. And just remember that there are other people around you that are experiencing also their own frustration. So that's what I mean by responsible because you can be curious and you can be like really outgoing and dynamic and do all, all the, you know, like asking questions and getting into conversations, but be responsible with how you do that. Because if you end up aggravating a conversation or a social media, you know, texting kind of thing, then you may end up in a situation that you didn't want to be in in the first place. So 
be responsible with how you use the energy, but, but be curious, just go out and learn something, read something, do some research, see what comes up for you. There can be some extravagance. That's a Leo kind of word, multifaceted approaches. That is a Gemini word. So try different things. And of course, within reason. So a lot of what I say is has this balanced type of wording around it, because I know that we can go too far in either direction. Balance is always going to be, a, I think, a better approach. You're going to feel better. Nobody wants to like go too far and nobody wants to sit back and do nothing and then have regrets like, oh, I should have. So, you know, you want to use this energy. You want to try different things within reason. Think about that. It's like the Leo, like how am I going to use passion and creativity, but at the same time, go at that fixed pace, like not trying to turn everything upside down or throw everything out and starting from completely a new place. It's Mercury retrograde. So you are going to be reorganizing things. And then from the air side, which is definitely kind of like going out there and looking at a lot of different things and being curious and, oh, maybe I could try this in your project that you've already started or, oh, this is a new idea. I haven't tried that out. So it's kind of like keeping focused on what you're trying trying to do that Leo fix kind of keeping on spot, keeping the focus on the essence of your project or, you know, the relationship issue, you know, whatever it is you're working on while at the same time, bringing in new ideas and new energy. It's actually keeping the baby, but changing some of the bathwater, right? That's kind of what we're talking about here. We're probably going to run into different ideas and thoughts. We're going to be faced with things that are true and false. There's going to be a lot of passion behind the differing views that we're hearing about, kind of going back to using the golden rule and use that mindful communication. You may not agree with what other people say, and people may not agree with what you say, but if there's mindfulness behind that communication, at least you can have the conversation. Too often these days, there can't even be a conversation because neither side is willing to have a true conversation. It's you're wrong. This is bad. This is the terrible thing so-and-so did. And, and it's just this back and forth at each other. It's not going anywhere. So why bother having that conversation? Unless you're a politician and you have to go out and have these debates, we really aren't helping each other out, just wasting our time arguing on social media. So take a break and go use that time and energy on something that's going to be really productive for you because there is all this creative energy to tap into with Leo and with Mercury retrograde. You can go back and make things better from what it was before. Like it could have been great before before and now it can be greater. So take this time and try to focus some of it on yourself. Disengage from the drama. Whatever that drama looks like that is around, that is the best way to work with this Leo energy. There can also be some black and white thinking. And the answer to that is gray thinking that there's messiness. Embrace the messiness. The world is messy. Things don't fall exactly into place all the time or even most of the time. There's a complexity to our world. The next thing is about the Mercury retrograde and the Gemini energy through Mars and Jupiter. There can be scattered energy or you may be feeling like you're lost in the details. So this is the Mercury retrograde work, review, reflect, and realign. I love those three words when it comes to Mercury retrograde. Now, bringing that Saturn square in, there can be limits, delays, blocks, pressure, and attention type of energy. You want to keep your long-term goals top of mind and then be structured in how you go about working on whatever comes up. Your astrology chart is going to give you a lot more information and knowing where these placements are in your chart, because then you'll know the topics and themes that are activated. New starts versus already started. So uh, it's kind of going back to the Mercury retrograde, you're going to be better off focusing on things that have already started and not starting something completely new. Also resolving any relationship issues that have been existing, but nothing's been done about it. Do something about it under the Mercury retrograde. Focus on projects that have already been started, even abandoned projects from two years ago or farther away. If there's something that you started and you had to set aside under the Mercury retrograde, it's a good time to pull it back out and work on it again. So in your chart, what are you looking for? First of all, if you don't have your chart, you can get your chart free online. The two websites that I use are astro.com and astro-seek.com. When you have your chart, you will want to look for the houses that have the sign on the cusp, and then you'll know that is the house that is being 
activated. So you're going to look for your Taurus house. That is where the planet Uranus is traveling. You want to look for Gemini. Gemini is the sign that Mars and Jupiter are traveling through. Then you'll want to look for the sign Virgo. Virgo is the sign that Mercury is going to start its retrograde cycle. It's going to start at four degrees and it's going to retrograde back to Leo. So I have Mercury in both the Virgo and Leo signs because of that reason. Venus uh, is in Virgo most of the time in the new moon phase, but on the actual new moon, it's at 29 degrees. So it'll be in Leo, but only for a short amount of time. So you're going to want to look at Leo and Virgo for Venus. On August the 15th, actually, Mercury retrogrades back into Leo. So if you want to mark the date that Mercury goes from Virgo back into Leo, that's the date. Then you'll look for Aquarius for the planet Pluto, which I didn't talk about in this video. Pluto is a very important planet if it's making contact with something in your chart. Pluto's at zero degrees of Aquarius. So you would be looking at early degrees of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. If you have placements at, you know, zero degrees to like two degrees of those signs, then Pluto's very much activating your chart. And it can describe many things going on in your chart that I didn't talk about, but it's going to depend on your chart. Pisces, that's where Saturn and Neptune are traveling. So that's where all the planets are. And if you have a copy of your chart, you can look and you can see which astrology house they fall in and then read about that astrology house and you'll get more information as to the topics and themes that are likely to come up for you at the new moon. Now let's get into some activities that you can do. Write your new moon intentions in the new moon phase. And I gave you the, the date and the times earlier in this video. I also have a free new moon ritual guide and I'll link to it below so you can use that. This is a great opportunity to bring creative and dynamic energy into your Mercury retrograde routine. Socialize with your friends. Leo is a very social sign. You could do things like a game night or go shopping or visit beautiful places. You could go to an art gallery, take a walk in nature, go to a cool restaurant, like whatever you and your friends like to do. You could do the wine and paint. There's so many creative things that you could do. I would highly recommend you get together with some of your friends and you go and do that. Boost your confidence. I think I started out with that at the beginning. I'm saying it again. Do things that boost your confidence. Get clothes that make you feel good. Do things that make you feel happy. Whatever it is that boosts your confidence, do that. Leo, it's a fire sign. So wear more colors, more red. If you like red, that's a good color for Leo. If you're not into red, that's okay. I just say get more colorful. Bring some more color into your life. So combining the new moon and Mercury retrograde, here's other activity ideas. Slow down on generating new work. Pause and reflect on how far you've come since the last Mercury retrograde. This is what I do. This is how I work with the Mercury retrograde cycle. I recommend doing something a little bit different for this Mercury retrograde since we're going to have the Leo new moon phase kicking off and then Mercury retrogrades back into Leo. So bring some Leo into your Mercury retrograde activities. Do creative reflection. And that's really like interactive, bringing in other things that stimulate your senses. So you could do dress up, role play. You could have a particular music that you like, or you can dance, you can sing, you can vision board, do things that stimulate your five senses when you're doing your reflect review and realign work. This is just to inspire you to like really get the creative juices going. So a little more on creative reflection. It's multimodal using clothes, props, role play, location, scenery. That means like actually going somewhere and working on your Mercury retrograde there and multi-sensory. So it's stimulating the five senses, bring visual things into your routine, vision boarding, music, or pen and paper. A great thing to do under the Leo new moon is to play with youthful abandon and curiosity. Moving along with more Mercury retrograde and new moon activity ideas. If there's relationship conversations that need to happen, plan to do that in August under the Mercury retrograde cycle. Do that in a place that's visually stunning, something that can really bring these conversations to life. It can bring like a vibrant tone into your conversation and it can help support creative solutions if you're surrounded by beauty and creativity. Because creativity should be higher 
at the time of the new moon than usual, definitely use that creativity and apply it to your Mercury retrograde. Schedule time on your calendar so that you can have more playtime. And this is for the whole month of August while we are in the Mercury retrograde. And you can really have some great breakthroughs as we move into this Mercury retrograde season. So definitely take some time to revisit something stuck or abandoned because you can really bring a new and fresh perspective. And you can use my structured approach to Mercury retrograde, which I'm going to share with you. First, in the pre-shadow phase, that's when I schedule the time during the Mercury retrograde. So right now, go look at your calendar and schedule some extra time off for play time, for reflection time, however you want to use it, creativity time. You'll want to find the houses that Mercury is going to be retrograde in your chart. So you're looking for the Virgo and the Leo houses, and you're specifically looking for anything between four degrees of Virgo back to 21 degrees of Leo and see, do you have a planet there, the sun or the moon or an angle, like your rising sign, your midheaven, look for any of those things. And that's going to give you more information. And then the other thing to do under the pre-shadow is just to look ahead and wrap up anything new that you possibly can and try to push anything brand new into September after the Mercury retrograde. During the retrograde is when you do the Mercury retrograde work. You're going to re Reflect, review, realign. You're going to work on abandoned projects. You're going to try to take it easy so that you can spend more time reflecting. And you're going to make those conversations with others happen and resolve relationship issues. And then in the post shadow phase, which is it starts right when Mercury goes direct, that's when you're going to wrap things up. You're wrapping up your reflection work and you're actually starting to work on those resolutions or those realignments that you discovered during Mercury retrograde. You can start looking to schedule new things, new launches, and all those new ideas that came up during the Mercury retrograde, making sure that they're in alignment with your long-term goals and vision. I wrote a Mercury retrograde guide and a 12-month workbook for Mercury retrograde that is free on my website. So I will include a link below if you want to go and grab that free Mercury retrograde guide from my website. To sum up the Leo new moon, I have this quote for you. It's from D. Wayne Dworsky, who says, to participate to participate in life, we must experience life through our five senses. We must see the world, hear its subtle messages, smell its flavors, taste its sweetness, and touch its surface. That sounds like a beautiful way to engage with the Leo new moon. I would like to say, get out of your head and into your body. I think that this is going to be a new moon that has a lot of mental energy to it with the Mercury retrograde and with Mars and Jupiter and Gemini ruled by the Mercury going retrograde. So there can be a lot of mental activity. So maybe you want to ground yourself and do things that bring you back into your body. That's why I think working with the five senses at the Leo new moon is a really great way to work with creativity and the Mercury retrograde and the Leo new moon. If you want some help understanding your chart or working through the astrology of the moment or of the future, please schedule a consultation with me. I would love to help you with your astrology chart. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back with another video on the full moon that's going to take place on Monday, August 19th at 27 degrees of Aquarius. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.